Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Art at Home with Mrs. Young. I come to you again from my backyard because spring is in the air. Spring is one of my favorite times of the year. Everything is coming to life. I know that a lot of you in your distance learning have been learning about the life cycle of the butterfly. And this project was inspired by a video that was sent to me by Mrs. Banks. Her class has been raising a monarch butterfly named Zelda, and she sent me this video. In this amazing footage sent to me by Mrs. Banks, which I've sped up just a bit, you can see Zelda hatching from her chrysalis. She's not alone. She has several siblings in there with her. It was amazing that Mrs. Banks captured this moment on film. Today, we are going to create our own symmetric monarch butterflies. We're gonna paint half of it and then print the other half. So let's get started. Before we get to the work of creating our own monarch butterfly, let's just stop a moment and simply observe these monarch butterflies captured in slow motion. Artists are always using observation to look at the world around them. So while you're watching, observe the designs of the butterfly, the colors of the monarch butterfly, and the way that it moves to give you inspiration and ideas for your piece of art today. For this project, you will need white paper, the thicker the better, at least eight and a half by 11, but the bigger the better, a brush and water, although you could use a Q-tip, black paint, water-based markers, you really only need orange, yellow, and red, and a non-absorbent plate or something that's non-absorbent that you can put your paints on. Okay. Now that we know a little bit about the monarch butterfly, we are going to be doing a, an activity where we are painting half of the butterfly and then printing the other half. So I think it would be best if you got your supplies ready and painted along with me. What I think would work best is if you watch me do a section and then press pause and you do that section. For this, you do have to work quickly. So you may wanna watch the video through first so that you know what you're doing. And then you're welcome to do this on your own or follow along with me. So this would be the smallest piece of paper I would recommend. Um, if you have bigger paper, I would use bigger paper just to do a bigger butterfly. Um, if you have thicker paper, I would use that. This is just a piece of watercolor paper, but printer paper from your um, printer will work too. It's just, it's just easier. Um, and I think the results are a little better if you do have thicker paper, but if not, don't worry. The other thing that you'll need is a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, you could use a Q-tip. Um, and then you need some black paint. Now my black paint was pretty runny, but I did add a little bit of water. If you have really thick black paint, you're going to want to water it down. So it's like the consistency of, um, Oh, I don't know. So it's it's um, like the consistency of like melted ice cream. Okay. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is fold our paper in half because butterflies are symmetric. And we know that symmetric means that they are the same on each side. So whatever we do on this side, we're gonna print to this side, okay? Butterflies also have three body parts. So the first thing that we're gonna paint um, are those three body parts. Now again, we have to paint fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna paint the head, the abdomen, and the thorax. Then I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna give it a massage. Now, when you open it up, you see that there is, it is a little lighter on this side than this side. I like that, I like the imperfections, but if you don't, you can always paint over this at the end to fill in that space. I kind of, I like the imperfections of this, so I'm gonna keep mine that way. All right, so the top wing of the butterfly usually comes between the head and the um, abdomen. So for that, I'm just going to take, I'm actually gonna start on the left side because I'm a lefty, but I'm just gonna go kind of up to the corner and I'm gonna print. You can do whichever side feels more comfortable to you first. Now again, it printed a little wonky, but I like that and so I'm gonna leave mine. You can always go back over it at the end and fill in any imperfections that you don't like. So for the next section, we're gonna divide the top and bottom wings. So I'm gonna just take a horizontal line that goes out and print. And then I am going to kind of close this up, but a, a little shapely. You can do yours however you want, but I noticed the monarch butterfly doesn't have a perfectly rounded wing. So I'm gonna do mine like that. All right, again, you can go back and fill that in if you want to. My paint probably could have been watered down a little bit more. All right, so for the next piece, I'm gonna go down like that. And print. And then close that piece. All right, so the basic outline of our butterfly is complete. Now, monarch butterflies have almost like little sections and they have some black and white over here. So I'm going to kind of section this off and then just kind of, if it fills in some of that white completely, I'm okay with that. This time I went on this side just to kind of even it out a little, but there's some of those, and I'm gonna actually leave those white um, when I add some color to this. You don't have to add any color to this, but I have the supplies, so I am gonna go ahead. And again, there's just kind of fast, it's gonna be symmetrical on each side, and it's okay if some of that black runs together and takes away some of the white. Be careful while it's wet that you don't smudge it. So for this one, I'm just gonna kinda go make some of those ribs in the wings. And then the same down here. Make some of those in the bottom wing. And the last thing, is to add the antenna. And so, I'm just gonna add the antenna. I didn't have a lot of room at the top. I probably should have started my butterfly a little lower. But, now you have a perfectly symmetric butterfly print. If it makes you feel better to go ahead and paint over some of these, you can do that if you like crisp lines, or you can just leave it as it is. I think for this one, I'm just gonna paint over some of these lines just because I started there. 
And then once this dries, there's a couple different options for how you can add color that we'll talk about in just a minute. Looking back at this, if I had it to do over, I would probably make my antenna, um, instead of facing inward, go outward, but it's not the end of the world. If you haven't painted yours yet, just make sure your antenna face the opposite way as mine. Okay, so when you are ready to add color to your Monarch Butterfly, remember the only color that you really need is shades of orange because when you look at a Monarch, usually these um, spots along the edge of the wing are white. And so typically a Monarch Butterfly is orange, shades of orange, um, black and white. Well, we already have the black and white, so all we would have to do is add shades of orange. Now, if you have colored pencils, those will work fabulously. So will um, paint if you have that or um, crayons. What I'm gonna do, or markers, I'm gonna kinda show you a fun way to use markers if you enjoy painting. Um, but let's just say you don't have a set of watercolors, but maybe you have a brush. Even if you don't have a brush, you could use a Q-tip, but a brush would work a lot better. Um, but just show you a fun way that you can create your own set of watercolors. So for the Monarch, even though it's shades of orange, I can create a darker orange using red orange, and I can create a lighter orange using yellow and orange mixed. You just need a, a place to put your marker that is not absorbent. So I'm using a styrofoam plate. A plastic bag works wonderfully, and aluminum foil is perfect. Um, a plate. Um, anything that is hard that won't absorb um, a paper plate, if, if it's a regular paper plate, won't work. This is a styrofoam plate. So the color I'm going to use the most is orange. So I'm going to get a lot of that marker. You need a nice juicy marker to make this work. Again, you don't have to do it this way. This is just a fun way to use our materials in kind of a different way. The yellow. And of course you need water and a brush and then the red to make uh, darker. I think I'm gonna make the areas um, closer to the body darker and I think I'm gonna have them get lighter as we go out. And so I am gonna start by, um, and I'll just show you real quick on a regular sheet of paper what this looks like. So this would be regular orange, and depending, just like regular watercolors, if you want it a uh, darker orange, you use less water. So there's the orange. And you could create your own painting sheets and do this, the red. Again, the darker, use less water. And then the yellow. All right, so if I wanted to make a lighter orange, I would mix more yellow. All right. That's why I used watercolor paper, but I know most of you probably don't have watercolor paper at home. So again, you could just color with regular markers, but I'm gonna go ahead and make kind of a deeper orange, a red orange, and I'm just gonna kind of paint pretty wet. And I used acrylic paint, so it holds pretty well. I don't want to overpaint so that my paint doesn't, black paint doesn't start to come off. All right, now I'm going to just do some pure orange. And you can blend right on your paper. And then add a little yellow orange in the mix. I feel like that's a little too watery, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some more orange and yellow and less water in that.
apply complete. So have fun coloring it any way you wish or not at all. Um, and that's our monarch butterfly. Actually, as an afterthought here, I decided this looks a little bit plain to me. You can add whatever background you wish. I'm just, I put a little bit of green here and I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the background. Blue would be really beautiful too since orange and blue are complementary colors, but I'm just gonna go with some green and yellow for the background. Well, that was fun. I can't wait to see your monarch butterflies. 